These are the words of the acclaimed poet May Sarton in her poem for All Souls Day. Did someone say there would be an end, an end, or oh, an end to love and mourning? What has been once so interwoven cannot be unraveled nor the gift ungiven. Our dead are, as you have heard again and again in this service with us, and May Sarton, who was in fact a Unitarian, says that our beloved are just part of our day to day, as we know those of us who have sustained loss to death. Many of us know this because of our life experience and others of us are trying to learn it before we need to know it. As Linda said so well, in our culture we rarely make room for death, so this service every year is one of the most important ones we do, I believe. It is a place that we acknowledge that larger home, those larger relationships in which love can grow. When together, as we did a few minutes ago, we say out loud the names of our beloved all together. We say the names of those who continue to be part of our day to day, though they journey with us now in a more poetic form. Poetry is something that speaks to us in ways that we cannot speak with just simple words or rational concepts. Its images offer us truths that lie between the words and in the crevices, and our embrace of death is like that, for sorrow carves its presence through absence. May Sarton again. Now the dead move through all of us, still glowing. Mother and child, lover and lover mated, are wound and bound together and in flowing. What has been plated cannot be unplated. Only the strands grow richer with each loss. What is plated cannot be unplated. As we discuss often in our monthly grief group, which meets this Friday as it happens from noon to one, those who we have lost still are with us every day. We keep them close and we know their presence. At this time of year, as Michelle said, when many of the earth-centered traditions tell us that the veil is thin, Cultures throughout time and space have created rituals and ceremonies to acknowledge the continued presence among us of those we have lost. And I'm so glad that Marie gave us the gift today of allowing us to celebrate Dia de los Muertes, which we only do when we are led by someone from that Mexican culture in this congregation. It is important to recognize that these are very important pieces and we see that just as we also have seen too many times this year in roadside shrines or shrines that have been placed at the site of great violence. Dia de la Mortes has been recognized by the United Nations Education, Scientific and Cultural Organization as an intangible cultural heritage of humanity, recognizing that it is in fact high art in the acknowledgement of our connections with our dead. And these, these rituals have been refined over literally thousands of years. Again, the marigold petals, they make paths back to guide the dead, back to their home and their grave sites. The papel picado, the pierced paper, which you see in the front of the table, which is traditionally done with steel, makes a beauty that is fragile, the way that life is fragile. These holidays remind us of our precious life and how precious it is. The skulls remind us that we are all skeletons, as one observer said. To mourn, these festivals say, is an error if we only mourn. It misses the marks because we also need to celebrate the richness of our connection with those who have gone before but are still with us. And that is part, it may certain. And memory makes kings and queens of us dark into light and light into darkness spin. When all the birds have flown to some real haven, we who find shelter in the warmth within. Now for some of us, it's important to acknowledge that these rituals are hard because we are not settled in our relationship with those who have died. We may have anger, we may have unresolved feelings, we may have anger at death itself and its timing and its sense. But perhaps when we see the images of the shining skulls or these 
flowers, these beautiful marigolds. We're wary, unhappy, and we think of those with whom we had trouble, which is still unresolved, those who hurt or abused us. And that is why this is such an important part of our tradition, because in the universalist tradition, we are reminded each year that one of our joys is that our reconciliation is never done. As long as we have the ability to be in dialogue with the truths of our lives and to continue to be curious about the truths of another, even if they are not with us, as long as we are open to listening, even to disagreeing, yet honoring the other's worth, healing can occur. We need ways to let things go, and these rituals of release are important. And sometimes we just need someone to listen. In this spirit, we can hear Sartan's final words of her poem, not as a condemnation, but as a promise. We can see that our continued dialogue with that which has been our delight will lead us to the place where we can celebrate, celebrate the complex emotions these rituals bring. We can be those that help our neighbors, our children, our friends, our families move through death with curiosity rather than fear, with grace and skill rather than avoidance and wariness. So we end with May Sarton's words. May we make them so. Listen and feel new cherished, new forgiven, as the lost human voices speak through us and blend with our complex love, our mourning without end.